Heads up, 20 ups. Um, okay, so lots of things have occurred, or apparently I have lots of things to say to people. One, Hogwarts house. I never really knew what I fit into, but I took a test online because I didn't really know. And Lucy, you would be correct, I, I apparently am a Ravenclaw, but very close to being a Hufflepuff. But Ravenclaw came out in the end. So there we go. Sorry, I didn't answer that before. Um, I've read all the Harry Potter books, but I'm not super, super into Harry Potter for a rant that I can share at some later point in time because it may piss all of you off. But regardless, um, I got that. Um, Lucy, I loved your mommy moment. Your daughter's really, really cute. Um, Craig, I have done a Segway tour. Hang on. I'm Segway certified. I don't know if that's actually showing up. Yes, it was 2005, so um, I would guess it's not actually valid because I only did it once and don't think I would really remember how to do it <laughs> again. Um, but I like to hold on to it because how many people can say that they're Segway certified? Um, TJ, you asked about doing the road trip and if there were other things that like you don't think about. Um, when I did my road trip, I purposely planned around people that I could stay up with. We've got a lot of friends and relatives up the East Coast, so I would spend multiple nights with them, chill out in that general vicinity. Um, my biggest thing, I, I did pretty well planning it and not spending a whole lot of money because I was staying with people, um, and I gave myself, I did it really cheaply. So I actually allotted myself $10 a day to spend for food or kind of pretty much anything except for gas um, and because I was staying within a friends or family frequently um, we could make lunches at their house breakfast was covered there um, so I saved a lot of money that way and pretty much made it um, ended up spending just a little bit more I only ended up staying in hotels two nights out of about 14 so it was pretty good um, I was very emphatic that I didn't want to take highways I wanted to take all back roads so I had lots of maps with highlighted routes and everything, which was a lot of fun. Moving on. So um, every time one of you says that you can't read music, a small part of my soul dies. And, and I know it's not like the biggest thing in the world, and I know lots of people can't read music, but as a music teacher, it, it kind of makes me die inside. And, and I think that that should be remedied, only I don't really know how because it would be really, really boring if I just sat here and gave you videos every week on how to read music. Besides the fact that I don't really want to do that. I want to get to know you and not do that. But I'm thinking that perhaps if we get around to the theme of mini lessons, you all will be learning to read music. Yes. I was going to do music theory anyway, but maybe we'll back it down and we'll go straight with reading music. TJ asked if there was another name that you would have been called. Um, I would have been Daniel if I had been a boy pretty obvious, Danielle, Daniel, it makes sense. Um, to my knowledge, there was no other name that my parents were going to call me. At least they haven't said anything. Um, I wanted to briefly mention Calvin and Hobbes. I also have the indispensable Calvin and Hobbes, which I love. My dad has all of them at home. I only own two. I also have the 10th anniversary edition, which is awesome because it, it gives, it gives like, background information on each of the comics and, like, what he likes about them and, and dates that they were published and I don't know if you can actually see and, like, little bits about how he came up with each of the characters and the process of, like, actually getting uh, comics published. And then my favorite, my favorite fact that I learned from this, I love getting the background information. I'm geeky that way. Um, my favorite information that I learned from this book was that the very first Calvin and Hobbes pu comic ever published was published exactly two years before I was born. So on my birthday, just two years before me. Which is awesome! November 18th, 1985. The first ever Calvin and Hobbes comic published. That makes me happy. Um, and yeah, grew up reading Calvin Hobbes, love Calvin Hobbes. I love the winter ones where he makes all the snowmen. Those are always my favorite. Um, favorite books. We're going to go on a trip to the library because I, uh, and by library I mean the room in my house that my roommates and I have all of our books in. 
So, uh, walk with me. I, I couldn't decide ahead of time, and so I was kind of hoping that if I just sat here and stared at my bookshelf long enough, I would I would realize what my favorite books were or what ones that I think that everybody should should have to read. Um, but I realized I only have a small portion of my books here because most of them are packed up in boxes at home. Um, but here's what I can. Oh, okay. So I haven't actually read this one, The Poe Shadow by Matthew Pearl, but because uh, I just bought it. But I did read The Dante Club, same author which was fabulous. Um, I'm not normally a modern fiction kind of person. I like my classics and historical fiction and some science fiction -y fantasy stuff, but um, The Dante Club by Matthew Pearl. Check that one out. Apparently it's at home. I didn't know this. Um, the Count of Monte Cristo is perhaps my favorite book, and I know it's long, and I'm sorry and know that probably most of you won't read it. Um, but fabulous, it's funny, it's intriguing, it keeps you thinking. I love it, I love thinking. Um, this is actually my dad's copy of The Brothers Karamazov, which I haven't yet read, but that's his favorite book. He kind of did a read it like every, every year, every other year kind of thing. Um, clearly this book has been read a lot, The Phantom Tollbooth perhaps one of my favorites growing up. Going back a little bit, I love George MacDonald. So we've got The Princess and Curdie and The Princess and the Goblin. More kind of technically children's literature, but really it took me like four or five starts before I could get anywhere in it because it's kind of dense at the beginning. Um, other than that, you can see I have um, a lot of Terry Pratchett, <laughs> and I just bought a new one. So the, Terry Pratchett is my go-to for, um, I, I've i just spent a whole lot of time reading classics, and now I need something that's a little bit lighter, but still, still something that I have to think about, because I like thinking about what I'm reading, um, just like I like to watch movies that I have to think about. Um, so yeah, that's that. I'm looking to see, of course we've got Douglas Adams up there. Um, The Princess Bride, Sherlock Holmes I love, um, I'm rereading those shortly. I've been in this big kick of rereading books. Um, yeah, The Hobbit, love The Hobbit. Um, here's one that's interesting. We have The Wonderful and Surprising History of Sweeney Todd, which is, um, kind of amazing. I'm still in the process of reading it, if you can see. There we go. Yep. Uh, oh, darn it. I thought I was farther along. Why are there two bookmarks in there? Huh. I'll have to figure that out. Um, <laughs> but I... It's been really interesting. You have to take kind of everything they say with a grain of salt because it's very biased, um, but really good. So, yeah. I think I think those are... If, if you're going to go out and read something... The Dante Club is good modern fiction. Um, the Count of Monte Cristo, if you're up for a lengthy kind of heavy book, but so good. Um, or I just finished Tale of Two Cities. That was really good. I mean, it was the second time I'd read it. I was reading that. Um, I have a lot of pirate books right there. Anything with pirates I'm super into. Um, yeah. I think Terry Pratchett's always good. I think I think that kind of covers my favorites. I feel like I have to be missing out on something, but I don't. I don't know. Anyway, um, I can't wait to see what other book recommendations you all have for this week. And DFTBA.